To understand China, three facts must never be forgotten. China is history. China is land. China is people. It's the fall rice harvest in Hainan, China. And to the casual observer, nothing here would seem out of the ordinary. The bundles of rice are all neatly placed in a row. And passersby unknowingly help with removing the grains of rice from their stalks. Although everything does look ordinary, there's more to this large concrete area used to dry the freshly harvested rice than there would seem. If it weren't for the local tales passed down from generation to generation, along with the more modern use of aerial photography, it would be difficult to tell that this area is actually a crumbling abandoned airfield from a bygone era, a history that many in the Western world don't know about or were not taught, the history of the Japanese invasion of Hainan, China. Without these stories, the history would be forgotten and without telling them, their memory would crumble into dust like much of history often does. Join me as we discover the remnants of Japan in Hainan, China. For Japan, only one twentieth the size of China, and with only one sixth its population, to think of conquering China, much less the world. The year is 1939. Japan had already invaded the mainland of China and was beginning to slowly extend its grasp of control over the Asian world and in the Pacific. Japan, recognizing Hainan as a valuable acquisition, not only for its rich resources of iron and copper, but also because of its strategic location decided to invade and occupy Hainan in February of 1939. Using a naval force consisting of primarily aircraft carriers and cruisers, the 5th Fleet of Japan, led by Vice Admiral Kondo Nobutake, moored off northern Hainan midnight, February 9, 1939. A landing force was quickly moved ashore. Even Prince Nobuhito, the brother of Emperor Hirohito himself, observed the landing personally from the cruiser Miyoko. The aircraft carrier Akagi and seaplane carrier Chiyoda lent their planes as air cover for the amphibious landing. Over the next two days, similar assaults would happen on the capital city of Haiko, the principal port of the island, and the southernmost city of Sanya, often referred to as the end of the earth in ancient China. Through air bases established on the northern and southern parts of Hainan Island, raids on mainland China, as well as other strategic areas to the west, could be easily carried out, with little to nothing being able to stop them. Japan would use this forward air base not only to establish other air bases in the Pacific, but to begin taking over the other countries nearby. Japan would occupy Hainan until 1945 with their surrender, but their influence can still be seen all over Hainan to this day. A stark reminder of the unwelcome enemy who caused so much pain and sorrow in their stay. In spite of all the atrocities committed by the Japanese on the land of Hainan and its people, the spirit of Hainan is alive and thriving. The spirit of the Hainan people was not broken. People like Feng Baiju, who fought the Japanese using guerrilla tactics, likely saving countless lives of his countrymen. He fought them until they left his home soil, broken, bloody, and beaten. That same soil grows a bounty of fruit, vegetables, and grain year round. What also can be found, though, are reminders of a different past, standing in odd contrast to the life that surrounds them. 
knowing one thing about a place's history can often unlock a different perspective for the entire place. And for this area, that key is the airfield. With further exploration, we find not just crumbling buildings, but control towers, bunkers or storage, other buildings used for possibly storage or machinery, and small round pillboxes. Though their use now might be a little different than what they were intended for, it is almost a fitting ending to the story, showing the resilience, spirit, and ingenuity of the Chinese people. <laughs>